So, thank you very much. <coughs> so, I just want to make a few quick acknowledgements uh, before I start. So, uh, my name is John Stowe. I worked prior to 2007 with uh, Siemens Healthcare and uh, also uh, GE Medical Systems. And uh, some of my roles in those two organisations was to work in CT field service. So this idea was born a long time ago, a long time before uh, Spectral CT, but it lingered, and when I got to UCD, I decided I was going to uh, research this through to conclusion. Um, funding for the hardware came from Enterprise Ireland, and for the software came from UCD, and the CT scans were carried out in Beaumont Hospital in Dublin. So we all know uh, beam hardening, so in this simulation, I'm going to use the SpecCalc um, algorithm to simulate the artifact, and then I'll talk you through the actual research. So basically we have a, a beam spectrum that actually travels through the, the um, scan field. And if we stick a, a metal rod, for instance, in the beam path, we get an attenuation signal recorded from that piece of metal. If we then actually put another piece of metal in the beam path, we would like to have the same attenuation signal recorded from that second one. But in fact, in passing through the first metal object, what we have is we have preferential attenuation of the low energy radiation, and we see a shift from, in this case, 57 keV up to 74.4 keV by the time the beam hits the second metal object. So we don't have the same energy striking the second metal object, so we get a deficit in the recording, and that results in that projection being contaminated. And in fact, when it passes through the second metal object, the beam energy is in fact shifted even further for any other objects that are in that. So we have contaminated projections within the data set. So there have been uh, efforts made as way back in the 1980s by her calendar. We saw linear interpolation being used to actually try and remove these defective measurements from the reconstruction. And in fact, these techniques are still used a lot for the seeding images when we use iterative reconstruction. So basically, the idea of that is that we identify the metal within the, the scan field, look at those projections within the sinogram, and we simply just average them out or get rid of the, the defective information. So this is the PACT algorithm, or predictive artifact correction technique, that I wanted to work on. So I'm not going to bore you with that. I'll actually take you through it visually. So basically what I use is I use a thresholding technique to actually identify the metallic coincidence events within the raw data. What we then do is we actually analyze the projections for the entire overlap, because this may happen over a degree or two degrees. So quite a few, uh, a few projections may be contaminated during this overlap. So we actually analyze them, and we also analyze very carefully the shape of the peaks because they're quite skewed as the objects come into alignment and then go out of alignment again. Then what we do is we just step very, very slightly to the side of the coincidence event, and we can actually see the separate objects just before they come into alignment. And at this stage, we can identify what the individual components are that are actually going to form the data that we need. So we can predict what the value should be from the point of view of the reconstruction process, and then we can actually calculate a correction factor. And then we apply that correction factor, again, being very careful to, to, to use it in correlation with the shape of the peak, whether it's slightly skewed or in perfect alignment. So let's have a look at some results. So I used the CIRS uh, dissimetry phantom for this. And basically, I was able to produce an image like this as my ground truth. So the yellow line there is actually the voxel data. And we're going to watch that voxel data throughout the entire experiment. So this is essentially our truth. And we have from air to bone. And we also have some very subtle variations to mimic what we might see in normal head CT. So the next we have is we, we put some metal rods in place for, to generate the artifact. And no surprise on what the image looks like. But when we look at the voxel data, it's still quite interesting that the data has been shifted down. We have an actual offset in it. And it's not a linear offset. It's material dependent. But at the same time, we can see that the structure of the data, the, the pattern, is actually still quite solid. If we actually apply, then, uh, commercial metal artifact reduction routines, so this is not iterative and not dual energy. This is conventional linear interpolation. <clears throat> we can see we definitely have suppression of the artifact, but we can see some sort of distortion in the voxel information. Applying the predictive artifact correction technique, we actually see there's good suppression of the primary artifact, and the pattern looks to be quite similar. <clears throat> so it's very, very hard to judge these in isolation. So I'll compare two first and then put them all up together at the end. So if we look at linear interpolation, we can actually see good suppression of the primary artifact visually, but we can actually see a worsening of other artifacts, particularly if you look in the frontal or, or sinus area there. And this is because linear interpolation by its nature affects every single projection in the data set because we're, we're traveling to the sinogram and removing the entire metal data. 
whereas the PACT algorithm only focuses on the overlap region. So again, we can see good over, a good suppression of the primary streak, but no uh, influence whatsoever in the ancillary streaks or artifacts. When we look at the voxel data, it gets a lot more interesting. So we can see there's a very, very big difference between the two uh, voxel data set recoveries. So if we actually put the whole lot together, and this slide is the easiest to work with, working from the left, we have the truth image. So that black profile of the truth information is actually the, yellow dot, or the red dotted line in the subsequent images. So we can see the shift downwards when we introduce the metal streak beam hardening artifact. And as I say, it's nonlinear. So if you look at the air and bone components in particular, you'll see that the, the offset is not the same. So that's true for all the different materials. When we actually apply the linear interpolation to recover the data, we see that the, the base level has actually been well recovered. So we're back around the, the zero Hansford unit level that we would expect. But we can see that the actual individual information within the voxels hasn't been actually accurately re uh, recovered. The other thing that's quite interesting from this that we weren't expecting is we're actually seeing a spatial shift along the detector axis as well with this information. Whereas with the packed algorithm, while it's not a perfect recovery, we can still see, particularly at the air and bone levels there, we can see that there is a defect. We can see that there is actually um, superior uh, voxel information recovery. So we can see both visually that we have superior information in the area of interest, and we can also see that, that uh, numerically that the voxel information has higher fidelity than with the other technique. This is a throwback technique because uh, spectral CT is on the horizon and we have our prediction for five to ten years and we'll have multi-bin detectors. So maybe this is uh, a little bit uh, too little too late, but it's something that I wanted to work on from a long time ago. So uh, there's my references and thank you very much. <laughs>